So you wanna learn FPV, but maybe it seems like a lot of time and a lot of money to invest. Maybe you don't know how to solder. That's okay, it's not as bad as you think. So I'm here to offer five of the biggest misconceptions of FPV. Misconception number one is it takes a long time to get good. Now I'm not proclaiming to be the best pilot in the world, but I'll go through some of my clips on just how many months it took to get to around what level. There is a steep learning curve, so much information to learn and so much stuff to do. And while it can be very, very daunting at first, once you kind of get over the first hump of it, you're pretty much set. I would say it took me about four to six months. At that point, I was comfortable enough to fly around cars and people and through houses and, and also repair the quad when you inevitably crash it. Misconception number two. You're either stuck with a three inch or a five inch. I know pilots that started out with a Cinewhoop style drone and that's all they do. If somebody starts out on a Cinewhoop, that's great. It's great to learn. There's ducks on it. I actually started on a tiny whoop, which I highly recommend. But at some point, you should pick up a five inch. It'll teach you much more skill, much more reaction ability, and much more control. Now, Cinewhoop is perfect for flying indoors around expensive cars or people, but a five inch is really where you're gonna learn all your skills that you need to know. Different power loop moves and acrobatics, stuff like that will teach you a lot of control. Also, as a side note, I highly recommend building your first drone because it's really easy to fix it once you inevitably crash, especially starting out. And if you buy a pre-built, you have no idea what's going on inside. Versus if you build it and you put it together, you know why each wire is going to each spot. Misconception number three is racing is lame. When I first started, I got into it because you could strap a GoPro on it and you can get these incredible cinematic shots and these crazy moves and chasing cars and all this cool stuff. But man, racing just never appealed to me until I built some gates and I started flying and it's, it's just addicting. Also, there's a lot more adrenaline in racing than I originally thought. Actually, in FPV as a whole, I thought it was just going to be kind of casual, but it's scary. <laughs> it's scarier than I thought. If you want to get good really quick, build gates, set up different race tracks, especially tight technical tracks. Just learn how to shoot gaps and race like that at higher camera angles. You'll get real good real quick and they'll translate so much to your cinematography. Misconception number four. Now at some point I figure we should cover all the basics. They think it's like flying a Mavic. It's not like flying a Mavic. Mavic can be zippy, but not like FPV. You can go upside down and just run straight into the ground and it's gonna happen to you. Batteries don't last long. They only last about two to three minutes, maybe five if you're just casually flying. When you're in the goggles and you that's all you're staring at is screens that are inches from your face. I don't really wanna fly much more than that without having a break. It really is the right amount of time. Some people think it's cheap. You can spend less, you can spend more, but I just say a grand conservatively. Tip number five, it's highly illegal. It's not. Drone laws are always very confusing at first and hard to find even. Each country has their own drone laws, but for the US, you really just can't fly in national parks and airport space without consent. There's apps to tell you where you can and can't fly, which are very helpful and give you a general idea of where it's okay and where it's not. I'll leave some links in the description down below. The gist of it is the FAA controls the airspace and local authorities can control where you can pilot or not, but they can't really control the airspace. But not everyone knows the drone laws, so just be respectful if they do approach you. 
There's a bonus tip. Bonus. Digital is better. Albeit, it is kind of true. There's higher resolution on digital and just the image is really big and it looks good, but you could save a lot of money if you go analog. But about $100 a quad and you could save a lot of money on the goggles. Analog offers a more raw feel. You can get analog goggles for about 100. That's very cheap for goggles, but you can do it. Also, there's lower latency, so a lot of racers will actually just focus on analog. And a super bonus. And that's fail safes. Fail safing to me was a huge surprise. I had a Mavic before I came into FPV and I was like, you can roll for miles and it'll stop when you go out of range and it'll come back to you. With an FPV drone, it cuts, it's going down. And usually you could see it fall. It's a very scary situation, especially if you're in a crowded area and it's something you're gonna have to learn the limits of your drone. Now, there are some telltale signs. If you have RSSI, you can see kind of when the connection's weak or just be very latent and you, you can't control it super well. And it's a very scary situation, especially when you're in the city or like diving a building or something crazy like that. So you're gonna wanna take it to a park first and learn the limitations of what you can go behind and how far you can go and stuff like that. So that wraps up my FPV misconceptions. If any caught you off guard or I taught you something or maybe I was just blatantly wrong, let me know in the comments down below. I appreciate you watching and I would be so amazing if you would like, comment, and subscribe. See you next time. Peace.